I have a sidebar here for you on the topic cult deprogramming. Uh, it's a philosophical question to do with the omnipotence of a leader, whether a leader can be omnipotent um, in third and fourth dimensional reality. And it goes like this. On the astral plane, a killing cult will pursue the subconscious mind of an escapee with all the vengeance of the hounds of hell. And now I have for you a picture of a Greek water vase uh, with the hound of hell, which is supposedly had three heads and was named Cerebus. Um, it's from Wikimedia Commons, and so it's in the public domain, and so I can show it to you, and it looks like this. Pretty gnarly picture. There's the hound of hell according to Greek mythology. Anyway, to continue with the text, um, this killing cult will pursue the subconscious mind of an SKP with the vengeance of the hound of hell, which you've seen just now on the Greek water vase, or with all the single-minded intent of a master of the furies. And, and I have here a picture of presumably a self-portrait by a sculptor known only as the Master of the Furies because he did sculptures of the Furies. Um, and so here is his, presumably his self-portrait. He looks pretty angry, doesn't he? The Master of the Furies. It says here, uh, this Sculpture was done about 1610 to 1620, and uh, it's in the public domain because it's very ancient. It's also in Wikimedia Commons, so I can show it to you. So the image in the sidebar is of the, the Master of the Furies leading the Furies on to the destruction of their charge. And do I ever have a a painting for you of the Furies attacked, attacking someone. Uh, this is Orestes pursued by the Furies by the painter John Singer Sargent, who, with whom you may be familiar. It's in Wikimedia Commons, and it's in the public domain. It looks like this. Wow, huh? Action-packed. There they are, after him. That's what I felt like when I was running away from that spiritual group. I felt like Orestes, pursued by the Furies. I guess you could say the Furies were the women in the group, which there were quite a few. And you could say the master of the Furies was the leader of the group, who was on the subconscious plane, um, leading the subconscious minds of the people as they slept. And since he was angry, then that anger funneled through all of their subconscious minds and into my subconscious mind as I slept as well. To continue with the text, this is the process of cult deprogramming, it seems to me. It is up to the cult SKP to lose the fear, lose the subconscious programming, and throw her pursuers off her trail through reestablishment of a peaceful, joyful frame of mind. In that way, the aura of omnipotence of a spiritual group leader, perceived by the cult SKP to be well-nigh invincible because of the astral clamor roiling around the escape attempt, might finally shrink so as to appear to be the fallible nature of most human endeavor. Centuries ago, St. Augustine of Hippo struggled with the perception of the populace that the Roman emperor was omnipotent and the notion that the all-powerful pagan god Jupiter might no longer be able to protect the failing Roman Empire. In his usual ingenious devising, St. Augustine came up with an explanation that the quality of omnipotence does not exist in a leader, even in the Roman emperor, 
and perhaps not in the pagan god Jupiter as well. Here is his explanation on the topic. For he is called omnipotent on account of his doing what he wills, not on account of his suffering what he wills not. For if that should befall him, he would by no means be omnipotent. Wherefore, he cannot do some things for the very reason that he is omnipotent. This is a quote by Augustine of Hippo. And taking that on down into the third and fourth dimensions, in other words, the omnipotent leader, whether he be the leader of a mind control cult, or the Roman emperor, or the pagan god Jupiter himself, falls under the aegis or shield of his own ego, his own free will. He does what he wills to do. That is the definition of his power in the world. Were he not to do what he wills to do, then he would not be omnipotent, is it not so? Personal power in the world is a function of ego, is it not? Yet, there is a whole other realm of endeavor in the world, that of service to those more powerful than oneself, that of doing someone else's bidding, that of not exercising one's own free will. The leader, who feels himself to be omnipotent, must do what he wills. In that way, he exercises his power over others. He cannot do what some other person bids him do and which he does not wish to do. Thus, as St. Augustine so adroitly put it, he is restricted to only half his free will opportunities in this the realm of duality. The emperor must lead, he may not follow. In the same way, a mind control cult leader is restricted in his endeavors. He must lead his followers, and in time, he must cease to pursue the escapee from his cult. As the law of one, the raw material, that's https colon slash slash www.lawofone.info forward slash puts it, there are two choices in the third and fourth dimensions here on earth. There is service to self, and there is service to others. One may not be, in quotes, all, or in quotes, omni, in the lower dimensions, though one may be, in quotes, all, in dimensions fifth and higher. I have one more um, sculpture for you right now. It's of Jupiter Dolichenus standing on a bull. It's by an unknown artist and was sculpted in the 2nd or 3rd century AD. It's found in Wikimedia Commons and it's CC by SA 3.0 so I can show it to you. It looks like this very strong looking person, yes, standing on a bull. This is the description. Like the ancient Hittite storm god, the Dolichenian Jupiter is standing on a bull. Face on, his left hand holding a thunderbolt and his right arm raised. But his outfit Leather breastplate with lambrequins, quins, coat hooked to the shoulder, the paludamentum, is that of the Roman emperors who, like him, have omnipotence, including in the army. His cult is widely diffused in all the provinces of the empire, where the military presence is important notably in the Danubian provinces. And then follows the quote that I 
um, read to you earlier by St. Augustine of Hippo uh, regarding the qualified nature of omnipotence in the world today. Well, that's a sidebar. <laughs>